A question we sometimes get asked on the FL Studio support forum is why doesn't my rendered track sound like my live FL Studio project? Well, assuming the user isn't rendering to 64 kilobits MP3, it's usually because they've used different live versus rendered interpolation settings. So what is interpolation and what effect does it have? Let's start with its effect. It only applies to transposed sampler channels and audio clips. To demonstrate, I'm going to play a hi-hat sample and transpose its pitch upward. Listen to the last few notes in this sequence carefully. Let's change the live interpolation mode as the loop plays. We'll compare 64-point sync interpolation to the linear mode. What you can hear are extra frequencies added from the digital artefact called aliasing. You should be able to hear the difference. The 64-point is cleaner sounding. This happens when transposed frequencies in the sample exceed half the sample rate, which is set here at 44.1 kHz. The critical frequency above which this aliasing occurs is called the Nyquist limit. The sync filter works mainly because it filters frequencies above the Nyquist limit and then to a lesser extent the interpolation itself. For a clearer example, I'm going to use this nice plugin from Soundhack to reduce the sample rate of FL Studio to 11 kHz, quarter the normal rate. This will cause some great aliasing. These frequencies up here are alias frequencies. They don't exist in the original signal. They are an artefact of the sample rate conversion. There is another kind of aliasing. In this case, it's the audio equivalent of zooming a picture until you see blockiness. I'm going to transpose a 10 kHz sine wave downwards. Since we are stretching the waveform, errors in amplitude are transposed downward into the audio spectrum. What's interpolation doing? Well, it's anti-aliasing of course, but let's zoom the waveform and I'll explain. The circles are the sample points. These are captured or known volume levels. See how the circles are joined by a smooth line? That interpolates, that is, reconstructs values between the points. This, by the way, is recovered information. It's not invented. Compare that to a linear joining of the sample points in green. See this part of the waveform? The linear interpolation looks a lot like a square wave. This is going to sound different to a smooth sync interpolated waveform and add alias frequencies. Like anything in audio, interpolation uses CPU power when transposing sampler and audio clip channels. It's up to you to decide if you want to hear what's really happening in your project, then use interpolation, or you want to trade that against running more plugins in the project. In conclusion, Keep your eye on the live versus rendered interpolation settings and listen out for aliasing's particular sound in samples. Once you know how to recognise it, you can add another skill to your producer's mental toolkit. Until next time, enjoy your sample interpolation.